Hello, my friend. You are tuned in to a brand spanking new episode of Tide Pod, and I am so excited today because we are joined by the founder and CEO of Coaches and Company, Yasmin Salem Hamdan. She is a Texas-based brand protection lawyer, a business consultant, and an educator in digital entrepreneurship. Now, that company, Coaches and Company, is a legal startup and media company that provides digital entrepreneurs with the educational resources and tools they need to protect themselves legally in business. Now, this is not just some random woman I pulled off the street. Y'all know how we do here on the show. I have been connected with her for, I feel like it's actually been, I purchased some of your products a couple of years ago now. So I've kind of been in your orbit for a long bit. And whenever I was thinking, who needs to come on this show next? Who do we need to talk to? I was like, now how the heck have we not reached out to the CEO and founder of Coaches and Company. What are we doing? take just a quick second to ask you for a serious bit of support. Tide Pod would not be possible without your reviews, your comments, and just all of the positive feedback that we've been receiving so far. So if you haven't already, please go on, hit subscribe to make sure you're not missing out on any of this good and free content, and also be sure to leave a review. You may think that I'm not looking at them, but I swear to you, my friend, I read every single review and it just makes my heart so happy. So if you haven't already done so, hit pause, leave a review, and then let's get back to the goodness. So Yasmin, I'm so excited that you are here today. I would love, love, love just for you to kind of introduce yourself to the Tide Pod community. Let them know who you are, what you're about, what the company is, is about you know, kind of just all of the above. Give us the spiel. Tiana, thank you so much for the kind intro and for having me. I'm so excited to be here and so looking forward to chatting with you. So my name is Yasmin and I am a business and brand protection lawyer. I am the founder and CEO of Coaches and Company. And as you mentioned, we are a digital startup We are a media and education company, and we support digital entrepreneurs, those that are selling services and digital products online in building protected and profitable businesses. And so the goal is for sure to build a thriving business that is profitable, that is helping you live out your purpose and serve others and create financial freedom for yourself as well. Uh, However, we want to make sure we are getting legally legit and protecting ourselves, building that solid legal foundation upon which we can build an incredible business that allows us to do so much in the world. So I'm so excited to chat today. Yes. Oh my goodness. Whenever I think about people like you who have kind of taken their expertise and found a way to serve some of these startup companies, these entrepreneurs, I get so, so excited. One, like, I feel like I get you. I understand it because I came from the corporate background, did all the things. And then I was like, ooh, I like these people. These are my people. (laughs) I I want to serve here. But I would love to say, like, what was that journey like for you? How did you land in the spot of finding this gap in the entrepreneur startup community and saying, oh, we can fill this gap? Dude. It's been a journey. Let's just say that. It has definitely been a journey. And I love that you get me because you understand, you know, the the differences between working in the corporate world, working in the traditional professional setting. It's very different. It's so different than entrepreneurship and paving your own way 
and doing things your way and designing your life, designing your career in a way that supports you instead of it being in a way that drains you, in a way that objectifies you, in a way that takes advantage of you. Um, you know, so it's, I'm grateful in that I, I didn't have this nightmare of a professional career before I jumped into entrepreneurship. You know, I'm, I'm really grateful that I was not in settings that I know there I've heard from so many women, uh, from people, of course, in general, from all walks of life, but specifically as, as one woman to another. And when I connect with other women and we discuss our professional careers, I have heard, and I know you've heard some stories, right. And some experiences that I wouldn't wish on anybody and nobody wants to live out in a professional professional setting or any other setting. But for me, I started my career in uh, in Dallas and uh, business law, um, protecting assets from a business standpoint. So physical assets, inventory, equipment, uh, brick and mortar. So renting out rentals and, uh, or excuse me, leases of commercial properties, purchasing businesses and properties, uh, wills and estates. So protecting your assets personally as well, which is very important. Um, and then brand protection. So protecting your trademarks, protecting your content, protecting all, all the things that go into that. And so I had a pretty vast array, I would say, of experiences across the board in terms of asset protection. Uh, but I was very excited and intrigued by businesses and entrepreneurship and brand protection in particular. So this was at the, uh, in the early days of social media, I would say, you know, it was, um, you know, Instagram had only been around for maybe two years by that point. And so I was on Instagram and I'm seeing people starting businesses and brands and brands are interacting with me as a consumer. And I'm kind of like, you have a trademark, my friend. Like I'm, I'm seeing all these different profiles and all these different brands. And I'm thinking, okay, I spot an asset. I spot a trademark. I spot, cop I spot copyrights. I spot, you know, these issues. I would be spotting issues all over the place. People using the wrong symbols to identify their intellectual. Pro and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I want to teach you guys. This is exciting because I can see how they are transforming the industries within which they operate. Uh, and also transforming what I'm imagining as the, the behind the curtain of their personal lives, because this is a vehicle through which they are creating financial freedom for themselves, or at least I hope that they are. And I'm sure they're hoping for the same, right? So yeah, I saw that. And I remember talking to my supervisor at the law firm I was at in Dallas. And I'm like, listen, people are out here on social media, do it, you know, X. and I'm telling him and he's like, Okay, cool, cool. So let's do a, and going on about whatever standard thing we were working on that month. And so after I was licensed and I was practicing for, and, and while I was practicing, while I was, excuse me, while I was studying for the bar exam, I was also, my time was being divided between studying for the bar and what I really love to dive into and all the rabbit holes I would dive into on on this World Wide Web what, about starting my own business, starting my own practice, how I could do this on my own and work with clients independently. So yeah, um, you know, long story short, started my law firm, began working with clients, uh, began working with startups. So I was working with a lot of tech startups um, on brand protection matters. I was consulting with them and uh, began to discover this world of digital entrepreneurship, selling services online, selling digital products online, selling courses online, digital marketing and funnels and ads and, you know, all the things that are involved in creating a digital business. And so, yeah, first time entrepreneurs, I mean, we have a lot of hats that we've got to wear. And I know we're going to get into a lot of that during our conversation today, but that's my story. You know, I, there's a bit more to my story. I will say <laughs> after my law practice, you know, how, how I got to where I am, um, you know, present day. Uh, but maybe we can get into that. Oh uh, yeah. Conversation goes on. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, like whenever I hear there's a bit more to the story, I'm like, well, what is the bit more? <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, after um, after a couple of years of practice, you know, I practiced for 
uh, for a while and worked with so many different clients from all walks of life, all different industries. I mean, across the board from tech to agriculture to uh, bakeries to beauty to health and wellness to business to I mean it's any industry you name uh, there's a great chance that at my you know in my practice and my firm served somebody in that industry uh, and I really as I mentioned enjoyed working with people that were in the, the digital space um, serving clients virtually one-on-one -on -one, creating programs creating courses digital products hosting virtual events, et cetera. Uh, and I love, what I fell in love with was women doing so on their own terms. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Like, I don't, I can't put into words how much I love that. I love that for myself and I love that for anybody that desires the same in their own life. And so I began working with more and more women that were doing that and supporting them in building that solid legal foundation in their businesses through trademark, so trademark law, protecting your brand, protecting your, your intellectual property assets, uh, specifically your brand name, your program name, your podcast name, your any your logo, any part of your brand, um, and also the content that you're creating, any professional relationships you're entering into, making sure you have the right contracts in place and those written agreements in place to protect your rights and your interests and protect their interests as well, and to protect the relationship, make sure that things go smoothly and have a productive professional relationship. So I was working with a lot of clients in doing that, and that was so much fun, and I loved supporting my clients. Um, in in all the different ways that we would uh there are a lot of people that i was meeting and that i was consulting with that were not in a position to invest in one-on-one -on -one legal services and so uh you know there were a lot of missed uh, opportunities i guess you could look at uh at it that way in terms of serving more people and supporting more businesses and helping people get those protections in place and um you know after some time i realized there has to be another way we can support people. And so we began supporting people through our digital products. So we created legal contract templates that are for all the different types of containers and services you might be offering, privacy policies for your website, terms and conditions for your course, one-on-one -on -one client contracts, um, independent contractor agreements, employee agreements, you know, all the different relationships you have professionally, you need those written agreements in place. Uh, and I have a lot to say on that topic and we can, we can discuss that later, but <laughs> yeah. So, so that is when I founded coaches and company. It was a little bit over a year ago. We are an education and media company. Uh, we create content, educational content and our legal tools and we are building a community. Um, and it's just been so incredible, like really, really, really good. And I've met so many amazing women along the way. And I'm really, what I'm most excited about, what I love so much about it from a personal standpoint, as far as like my personal experience goes, is being able to use this as a creative outlet mm. um, and as a form of creative expression. So that's something I've been exploring a lot lately. Um, but yeah, just the connection, being able to connect with others, other women, millennial women, uh, you know, just living the modern day experience and creating financial freedom for ourselves through entrepreneurship. I love to see it. Nothing like it. And let me tell you, I, I always love hearing people share their story and kind of give us the overview, the bird's eye view of kind of what things looked like along the way. Because from the outside looking in, obviously, like we have no idea. You know what I mean? Unless we know you intimately, we have no idea what that path has looked like. And I think it's so funny because uh, as quote unquote early or new as the coaches and company division is, um, it was a big part of my journey, which is so interesting to me. Like, I love the internet. I love how it brings us all together in life and in business. Aww, and all the places. But whenever I, I remember, I'm trying to think back to exactly when I made my first investment with your company and I can't pinpoint it exactly because it's been a couple of them. But I remember particularly whenever I was launching my mastermind and I remember saying to myself, okay, if we're going to launch a container of this magnitude, it is so important to me that like we are all, 
the T's need to be crossed. The I's need to be dotted. I'm not playing (laughs) whenever I dive into this. And so I remember I had already invested in, I think one of your bundles or something like that. And then I invested in another one because it's, it's just truly so, so, so I can't even, and I know you'll, you'll get on a big soapbox about this. I can't even like as someone who teaches teams and leadership, From the management perspective and the operational perspective, I'm like, where are your contracts? You don't have them? Okay, here's a website, coaches and company. Like, let's go, let's go get this hiring bundle. Let's go make sure that we're legally protected because it's not a joke. It's not. It's not. Do we make it easy though, or what? So easy, y'all. Look, and we didn't even talk about no sort of like sponsorship or nothing but just in this this episode alone let me tell y'all I'm giving you the real like I paid my money to this woman's company and I would do it again and I probably will do it again at some you're putting you're putting them on right now I'm I'm just trying to share the knowledge that's all I'm trying to do (laughs) that's it I love it well I would love to hear so whenever you were starting out and you were providing those intimate one-on-one services um, for your clients and like working with them hand in hand, day in and day out. Was it just you? Were you on your solopreneur? I'm wearing all the hats. Like talk to us a little bit about that. Ooh, okay. Well, when I was providing one-on-one services, I was a solopreneur for, I don't know. Um, I, I think I began, I hired my first person, uh, pretty early, like maybe five or six months in. Um, but it wasn't like a, a full-time employee or anything like that. So, you know, you definitely got to walk before you run when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to building your team and also developing as an entrepreneur, you know, like fig- in the early days, you're trying to figure out what is, what works, what do I enjoy and what do people need and what will people pay for and what is the best way for me to support them? And that requires some time, some experimentation. Um, so yeah, it was solopreneur for sure. I was marketing. I was, uh, having the sales conversations. I was sending the contracts and onboarding. I was rendering the service. I would close out the project and, you know, that was going on with multiple clients. And so pretty quickly I was like, all right, well, uh, I, I remember, I think my first hire was actually a bookkeeping service. So I hired someone to manage my books because I was like, all right, we got some money going. Okay. Money is fl- cash is flowing. We need somebody that has, you know, some expertise when it comes to that, because that is not me. Let's be real. And I'm really not trying to learn that because there are actually a lot of other things I'm trying to learn right now, which is something else that I was doing a lot of in the early days was I was just studying everything, reading everything, courses, trainings on the internet is a beautiful place, my friends, you know, and I know everybody knows this, right? There's so much information out there. And so that was something I was doing a lot of in the early days too, but hired the bookkeeper. Um, eventually I began working with a virtual assistant. And so that was a, a contractor as well. Um, just part-time, very few hours. It didn't really, I didn't need a lot of administrative support in those days, you know, so I didn't need to bring on a full-time employee. Um, and then I would work with contractors on project basis, uh, you know, whenever it was needed. So if I needed some support, um, you know, graphic design support, or if I needed some copywriting support, or if I needed some tech support, you know, that would all be on a project basis. So I didn't really have any, you know, month to month support. I didn't really need it in the very early days, but for sure, if your marketing is on point, you know, and you've got, you're picking up some momentum, you want to begin building that regular support to support you in whether it's the marketing or the sales or the delivery or the admin slash tech, um, sooner rather than later. You don't want to get, you know, in over your head and be, there's a lot to say, to say on this topic. I'm sure, I'm sure you've got a lot to say on this topic, (laughs) but I'm enjoying listening to you say it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's what the early days looked like. You know, it was good. Um, Project management tool for sure. From day one, like that's a must. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't delay that. Don't be scared of that. It's so user-friendly these days. Like the tech that's available to us today, 
telling you. All the integrations, all the tools. I mean, it's there's it can be very easy and also very simple for you to manage your business today. I'm curious, uh, in your past, did you ever hold any sort of management or leadership positions or whenever you were bringing on these contractors and whatnot, was like this your very first rodeo? Oh, this was my first rodeo. Mm. This was my first rodeo. It was uh, a lot of trial and error, a lot of figuring it out, a lot of looking to mentors. So that's another important thing to develop early on in your in your career in general, you know, whether you are an entrepreneur or not, establish solid relationships, you know, nurture those relationships, make those connections early on, um, find people that are living a life that you resonate with or that resonates with you, you know, that you, you see one that they are authentically sharing with you, you know, so don't be deceived by the lifestyles that you see portrayed online. That's not real. Mm-hmm. Today's episode is brought to you by Dubsado. Let me let you in on the world's best little secret. Dubsado is one of those systems that has literally reshaped and revamped the way I do business on a daily basis. It is one of my top three to die for systems that help things run smoothly on the back end. My team uses Dubsado daily for client management. It keeps us organized, on track, and serving our clients at the highest level possible. I am not lying when I say about 70% of what my team has been able to automate with a system, y'all know I teach about that all the time, is automated in Dubsado. Yes, client onboarding, I mean, come on. Now you know. I'm not going to talk so highly about this and leave you hanging. I have got a partnership with Dubsado that's going to save you 20% on your first year. You can simply go to the website and use code TIANA20, that's T-I-A-N-N-A-2-0, to save 20% on your first year of Dubsado. Let me tell you personally, it is worth the investment. It literally changes everything. I'm curious... What what stands out to you about that time in your life and in your business? Like when you think about, ooh, okay, so I've got the bookkeeper. I brought on the VA, like cylinders are kind of firing off. We're growing, we're growing. What stands out about what it started to feel like to hold other people accountable and kind of like have people not in your business, but in your business, you know what I'm saying? What, <laughs> yeah, what stands out to you about that time period? Oh, okay. Well, it was a very interesting time period because my husband and I at the time had a business opportunity in another city that was about two hours away from where we live. So we live in the Dallas area. And so two hours away in Waco, Texas, it was it's country as hell out there. <laughs> we had a business opportunity. We took it and it was right at the same time of my law practice launch. So I was launching my law firm. And I was in that development phase and I had set the launch date and we had the opportunity come up. So we were figuring out all the logistics. And so I moved to this whole new area about two hours away, away from my professional network, which, like I said, this was in the, in the early-ish days, you know, of digital entrepreneurship as it has taken the world. Now the pandemic, of course, took it to a whole new level, but you know, then it was not, you know, you hear people talk about everybody has a brand. You know, every, and maybe there's an argument to that, you know, maybe that there, you can look at it that way, but then it was not, it was not like that. Um, but so I was in a whole new city in a whole new professional community trying to make connections. And it was really about getting uncomfortable, you know, like putting myself out there and going out there and just meeting people, which I was a professional networker before that in Dallas. I mean, I was meeting a lot of people. I was always expanding my network. I was just. I was outside all the time. Let me just put it that way. Um, But it really stands out to me just putting myself out there. And in so many ways, you know, professionally networking. um, And then also uh, figuring out how I wanted work to fit into my life. You know, at the time I was not a mom. So work could take over my whole life. 
And sometimes I liked it that way. Sometimes I, I let it be that way. But a lot of the time it was like, it doesn't need to be that way. You know, so I think there was also because it was a new experience, figuring out the balance that I desired during that season of my life was also a significant part of my experience then. Mm -hmm. So if we fast forward to today, do you feel balanced? (laughs) What (laughs) kind of question is this? It's a hard one. Um, That's what it is. Yeah, because I'm in a totally different season of my life. You yeah. know, new mom. I'm three years in. We were talking about it before we started recording. You know, it's uh, when I say like, yeah, my son just turned three. If that gives you the impression that I'm like, yes, I'm this very experienced mom. I've got it all together. <laughs> like, do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. That is not the case here. You know, that is not the case here. But I'm figuring it out. And I'm figuring out once again, you know, how does my professional career fit into my life? You know, Tiana, and I'm interested in hearing from you because I know you're in a in a different season, a new season of your life. Your son is three months old. We got a three month old and a three year old. Our hands are full. (laughs) Our hands are full and our hearts are full, right? Um, You know, it's sometimes I'm like, I wish I could work all the time. It's different. It's different. It's It's very different. different. I sometimes I'm like, wow, like y'all would not be ready for me if I could put in 40 hours. (laughs) It's like, imagine if I worked 40 hours a week. Stop. Imagine if I worked full time. Imagine if I worked full time. We would take over the world. What? Oh man. It's just like this. Um, you know that the the mind share. Right, like the, the what is taking, what is occupying my energy? What is occupying my focus? What is occupying my mind and my my thoughts? And you know, it's a lot of it comes back to to my energy too and my capacity. And so I also am like. I wish I could just take care of my son all the time. I really, you know, the thing is, Tiana, I know the solution. I just need to clone myself. That's it. We just need to clone ourselves. (laughs) That's it. How has technology not advanced to this point? Uh, I think we're pretty far off. I think we're pretty far off. (laughs) Yeah. But that's, and that's sometimes I, you know, I think that's just a part of the experience is feeling pulled in all the different ways that make you you. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. I love being a mom and I love that relationship. I love him so much. I love how he's challenged me and how that experience, this experience has challenged me in so many different ways. Uh, And I love the same thing about my business. Yeah. You know, I love the same thing about my relationship. You know, I, um, and I think all of these ways, all of these different aspects of our lives and different experiences we get to live can also be opportunities for creativity. So I'm trying to lean into that because I think creativity just makes everything more fun. Mm, that's true. You know, let's get creative. How can we get creative? And then it just gets the wheels turning, gets the juices flowing. We get to experiment. We get to test the limits and push the boundaries and figure out where the boundaries are as well. Right, identify those, and so ooh, boundaries is a whole other conversation. I'm I gonna have to come back for another, another. Episode. My my brain is already going, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm curious. Then, short of cloning yourself, like mm, we're we're pretty far off of that. Who exists in on your team behind the scenes? Like, who is helping you manage these creative spurts who's helping you behind the scenes what do things look like these days in the company yeah so what does my team look like these days it I'm figuring it out let me just say that I'm figuring it out but I have a pretty good system in place I feel like or systems in place it's a collection of mm-hmm. systems uh, and to-do list at this point uh, but on the personal side I have support with childcare so that is obviously number one uh it really feels like uh being the mom is such a special thing it's such a unique experience 
so much is on moms. I feel like I didn't really know what I was signing up for when I agreed to be a mom, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I really don't know that you can know all the things that you're signing up for. You kind of discover them along the way. Uh, nevertheless, it's a beautiful experience. I'm so grateful to be living it. And, and I'm glad to be on the journey with you as well. <laughs> one, one new mom to another. Uh, but I have help with childcare. So we have um, a uh, uh, caregiver that comes to our home um, for during my working hours. Uh, during the week. And so I work about four to five hours, uh, Monday through Thursday. Um, and so I also have a personal assistant that comes, uh, during those hours as well and helps knock off other things that are on the to-do list for our home care and maintenance and laundry and, you know, all the things that go on in a home. It's a lot. It really is. Let me just say this. <laughs> One of the top skills to continually work on and that you will continue to work on and develop. I'm continuing to work on and develop this project management. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you can get to, yeah, refining your project management skills, the sooner you will experience relief and, um, you know, balance if there, I don't know, if, I don't know if we can ever achieve true balance. Let's just, I think we can probably all agree on that, but, you know, having, Having, uh, I use a project management tool for all of the things that need to get done at home because it really is a lot. Um, and so yeah, I have my personal assistant and she only comes five hours a week. I can't have her come support, um, one day a week and, uh, she knocks out all the things, you know, and, um, on the professional side, I have an operations manager that supports and coaches and company. I no longer offer services under my law firm. Um, and so that's like a super, super lean situation right now. Mm -hmm. uh, on the coaches and company side, I would say it's still pretty lean. Um, we don't render services on an ongoing basis because our uh, revenue model is based on digital products. And so our operations, a lot of it is content creation, uh, content ideation, creation, publication. So we have, um, our operations manager, and then we have our content creation team. So that involves a graphic designer, copywriter, uh, a marketing assistant, and a couple of writers. And so, um, yeah, it's, I would say it's pretty lean. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty lean, you know, um, and an executive assistant, uh, uh, an administrative assistant to help with managing calendars and inbox and correspondence um, with, you know, all the different projects that we have going on. So yeah, I would say I, it's pretty lean. I love this. And I know I'm like very excited right now. My, my brain is percolating because mm -hmm. I think especially in the online space and with a lot of the people that listen to this show are thought leaders themselves, you know? And so this whole thing that is content creation is huge for probably like 85% of our Tidepod community here. And so I'm really curious what it, what, what led you to building out like, okay, I need a content creation team. I need people to help me create these graphics, write this copy, yada, yada, yada. What did that decision look like for you? How did you go about finding the people? Is it a firm? Like give us the real. Ooh, okay. So the journey has not been smooth. Let me just say that. <laughs> there, are lot, there are a lot of factors and there are a lot of moving parts and there are a lot of things that you've got to figure out personally. Uh, what is important to you in your business? You know, what is going to be your primary focus? Um, and what is driving revenue? And so for us, we really want to, and we continue to want to be, um, a leader in the entrepreneurial space. And, um, from a thought leadership perspective, from a, um, an ethics and, and standard, not necessarily standardizing practices, but, um, setting an example, you know, for those that are first time entrepreneurs. I don't think a lot of people are out here trying to 
scam others. I mean, definitely there are a lot of scammers out there, right? Don't get me wrong. But the people that are scamming are going to scam regardless. You know, I don't think most people are trying to scam. I think most people are trying to earn an honest living and create something for themselves that can help them create financial freedom for themselves and for their families and also be a creative outlet, you know, or a way for them to live out their purpose and to serve those that they desire to serve. And so um, content creation, I would argue that every business in in this year and beyond is a media company. Mm -hmm. You're creating media. We have at our fingertips access to a tool, which is social media that allows for us to connect with our audience in a way that businesses have never before been able to connect with them. So what language do we speak on the internet? The language is content, my friend. And so when we're creating content, that is how we can convey our values. That is how we can convey our va- the value we provide as well. That's how we can engage with our customer. That is how we can communicate what we stand for, what our mission is, what our, um, as I mentioned, our values are and how we can support. And for us, organic content marketing was very successful in the early days. Um, So it's something that I enjoyed ideating, uh, but I'm not a graphic designer. There are people that can create such beautiful design it would be a disservice for me to continue to try to do that. So yeah, I did it in the early days. I worked with a designer, got the original, you know, those, those uh, set templates, right. That were on brand for us. Design is very important when we're talking about social media and that's because it's a visual experience. It's all about the visuals. So I highly value design I, I I enjoy design. I appreciate design and I desire high quality design within our content and what we put out there. And so, yeah, it was a, a matter of, you know, valuing design. So it's like, okay, I need to make sure that there are skilled people and that we have great talent that are creating this content for us. But then also I physically could not do it at the volume at which we were wanting to do it. And so yeah, had to get that content creation team. I think it's always a matter of, um, you know, as you move out of that solopreneur role where you're doing everything, you've got to figure out, all right, so we have marketing, sales, delivery. Where do I really want to be focusing? Where do I want to be spending all of my time and energy? And maybe it is in delivery because only you can do that or you really enjoy doing that. You really could take yourself out of all of it, but you know, that's your choice. And that's another great thing about entrepreneurship. There's no one right way of doing things. You get to decide how it fits into your life and how you can best serve your business as the CEO. Oh, love that. Total mic drop moment, y'all, right? Goodness. Uh, I would love to know then for each of the roles that you mentioned that take part in the content creation team, did you find them separately or is it like an agency that you were able to bring in? I found them separately. Mm, how is that? Good. Um, yeah, I, should I go into the details? I use Indeed. Uh-huh. Uh, I enjoy using Indeed. Yeah, it's been good. Um, haven't, and LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn jobs. Um, that's been a good experience. So uh, yeah, LinkedIn, you should sponsor this podcast thank you <laughs> what are they what are y'all doing if you're not sponsoring <laughs> <I'm confused. laughs> yeah um yeah it's it's definitely I'm here for the recruiting I've tried using a recruiter in the past wasn't the best experience uh but I won't blame it on the recruiter because the market was crazy at that time I also could have used some better, it was early on in my hiring journey. And so I don't know that I was in the best position to be communicating what the exact, what kind of role we were looking to fill. I don't know. It was, I wouldn't knock it just yet. I might use a a recruiting agency again at some point or some sort of staffing agency, but yeah, Hey, you can do it yourself. You don't have to go through an agency. 
Oh, absolutely. Look, and I, that there are recruiters in my network for obvious reasons that I adore. And I'm like, oh, you need a recruiter? Go hit up this person, go hit up that person. But there's a reason that I built my course, Dream Hire Bootcamp. I was like, you can very much do this yourself. And if you yeah. need a little bit of education around what a streamlined process is looking like, here you go. Like, yeah. please, y'all, you can do it yourselves if you need to. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So be honest with us. Have there been any hiring hiccups in your years or any, <laughs> any just experience, you know, you know, not everything is rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes we bring on someone and we're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> like, what has that really looked like for you? Yeah. You know, definitely have had some hiring hiccups. Definitely. Um, I think it comes down to fit. You know, sometimes it's a matter of it's just not a good fit. And I think at that point, what's important is that you are professional about communicating that and terminating the relationship and make sure that you're abiding by the contract that you have in place. And first and foremost, have a contract in place, you know, so you're going to have you're going to have hiccups when it comes to hiring. And that's just it comes with the territory. It's a part of the journey. And that's okay. It doesn't mean, you know, anything's wrong with you or that you're bad at this. It's just another opportunity to learn and figure it out. And so I'm all about being proactive. And so be proactive when it comes to those, you know, you're entering into professional relationships, you know, the nature of these relationships are unique. Make sure you have all of the different terms of the relationship in writing and that you're in agreement and that it accounts for when this professional relationship comes to an end, how do we go about doing that and follow those steps? Absolutely. Whew. Well, I would love just any final thoughts, anything you feel called based on this whole conversation. I feel like we've covered a lot of bases here. We've gone from just that early solopreneur to motherhood and business back to making sure we are, you know, really entering into these professional relationships intentionally and protecting ourselves and allowing them to protect themselves too. But do you have any final thoughts, anything that's just kind of swirling up there that you want to share with our community today? Yeah, um, so many things that I would love to share for sure. And first, I want to say thank you so much for having me. This has been so much fun. I love chatting with you. And it's so refreshing to chat with another woman in business that is, you know, on the same ride and doing the same thing and figuring it out as well. And, and I think that's what I would like to share is, you know, don't feel like don't get down on yourself if you are having, you know, a tough time um, or a there's a challenge that you're facing right now, or if you've had a bad month uh, revenue wise, or if you had a failed partnership um, within business or whatever is going on in business, just know that it's a wave, you know, and you just got to ride the wave and just keep going and remind yourself that you're incredible. Uh, go to all of those testimonials that you've received from clients or customers over the years. Uh, reach out to a friend and give her the opportunity to remind you of how amazing you are. And just know that everyone is figuring it out. There are no rules when it comes to how you design your business, besides the legal ones, I guess. The legal rules, they stand. We want to be aware of those. So come on over to Coaches and Company and figure it out. Shameless plug right here. We'll help you figure it out. We'll yeah. help you abide by the rules uh, from a legal standpoint. Uh, but you know, when it comes to designing your business and the path that you take, there are no rules here. You get to decide how you want to serve the, your community and how you want your business to support you, how you want to allow others to support you. Woo! Allowing others to support you is another conversation, <laughs> but you've got this and the road is not ending. You know, it's just beginning. You can continue to pave your own path. And I want to encourage you to do just that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, this road, it don't have no ending. In case y'all hadn't noticed, it just it just keeps going. So I hope you are enjoying the journey along with us for real. For real. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One final question before I forget, where can everyone connect with you? Because there are going to be people just like me who is like coaches and company. Yes, me and I need to connect in all the places. So let mm -hmm. them know where they can find you. 
<laughs> yes. So I am, we are on Instagram. So you can check us out at coaches and company. Uh, and then my personal Instagram, my name is a bit long, um, but I'm sure it'll be in the show notes. So I also hang out on Instagram as well. Um, I'm on LinkedIn and our website is www.coachesandcompany.com. And I think we will have a code for you as well uh, for Tiana's community. So yeah, if you are looking to get your legal level up on, you know, we've got you. I'm telling y'all, shameless plug again, personal experience, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> now, now the, now the, the link in the, in the, bio will or excuse me in the show notes will likely be a an affiliate link so let me just put that out there we got to make that disclosure but yes look just following the rules we gotta let them know we gotta let them know we gotta be straightforward and that's uh you know that's a uh, one of the topics that we're te- we teach on at coaches and company making sure that you know we're our practices are are ethical are um you know, by the book and that we're not having to look over our shoulder or be worried about, you know, we're doing something wrong, the other shoe's going to drop. We can have that peace of mind when it comes to the legal stuff and then be able to continue to pour into our businesses. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you shared. I know that everyone enjoyed the conversation. We all love to be a little nosy and just like, hey, <laughs> what's going on behind the scenes? Like, tell me everything. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. Thank you, Tiana.